In life, we encounter people every day, all of whom have stories to share. We rarely take the time to ask people their personal stories, many of which will touch, move, and inspire us in some way. Matt has a passion for making authentic connections and learning about people from all walks of life. He has lived a life of giving back to the community and making a difference in people's lives. Are you ready to meet fascinating people and hear some inspiring stories? The Matt Hilton Show will introduce you to a world of possibilities you never knew existed. Sit back, be present, and enjoy. Here's your host, Matt Hilton. Hey everyone, Matt Hilton, the host of the Matt Hilton Show. Today's guest is someone who is very special to me, and I can't wait for you to meet her. She grew up in California. She's worked at Disneyland as a Disney princess, and uh, she has recently moved to Texas and is now the CEO of My Killer Williams office in Richardson. Stay tuned. You don't want to miss this show. Inspired, experienced, customer focused. Find a mortgage that fits your needs with Maria Leach at First United Bank Mortgage, specializing in construction and closing all types of loans, including jumbo, portfolio, conventional, FHA, and VA. A tenured team, outstanding service, competitive programs. Finance your dreams with Maria Leach at First United Bank Mortgage. mleach.firstunitedteam.com, 214-316-7915, mleach at firstunitedbank.com. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Hey everyone, thank you so much for tuning in today. And uh, we have one of my special friends. I've grown to know Sarah over the last couple of years, and she has been someone who is a friend, a mentor, and just an overall great person. And I wanted to introduce you to her today because I find her fascinating and inspiring at the same time. So Sarah Waters, thank you for being here. Wow, I'm ready to just wrap up my day and go home on that note. I mean, that's great. <laughs> just follow me around and compliment me all day long, please. No. Of course, <laughs> thank of you course. for having me. Well, for sure. And thank you for coming on, on the show today. Um, it's exciting. Yes. Uh, yeah, so you've had an interesting life so far, um, <laughs> to say the least. To say the least. And so you are a trans, one of the transplants in the Texas. Don't hold here. it against me, Texans. Mm -hmm. Yep, I am. Uh, I was born and raised in good old Southern California. Southern California. Yeah. What part? Um, it's a dusty desert. Uh, a lot of people would know it um, as being the pit stop on the way from Los Angeles to Las Vegas. Uh, so it's called the High Desert. Okay. Um, it was actually uh, became famous because uh, Roy Rogers and Dale Evans uh, put the place on the map. And so uh, it was a very small community. And now it's, it's grown quite a bit. Um, so my family was some of the original homesteaders there. So um, I had great grandparents that had um, an outhouse in the backyard that I got to visit. And uh, there were streets named after my dad and my uncles and my aunt. And um, yeah. Well, looky there. Yeah. yeah. You didn't know that didn't about know me. That. I didn't know that part. No. This girl knows how to use an outhouse. All right. <laughs> As someone who grew up in California, mm -hmm. like, what was what was your childhood like? Like, what did you do um, as a child growing up living in California? Well, believe it or not, um, it was a lot of playing in the dirt um, where I grew up. Uh, so I lived by the California Aqueduct. So we would walk down a dirt road to the Aqueduct and fish. And I grew up on dirt bikes. And I got on snow skis when I was three years old, and that became a big passion of mine. So mm -hmm. I grew up snow skiing, snowboarding, um, water, um, obviously. So um, I went to a lot of lakes. Um, my husband and I have known each other since the second grade, mm -hmm. and um, but we didn't date. We didn't date. That's a long story there uh, for a different time, probably. Uh, but we actually ended up getting married um, on a bow of a boat at, in a lake um, in our bathing suits and just, you know. It was Lake Havasu, Arizona, but yeah, so a, a lot, I'm very outdoorsy. Um, most Californians are. Okay. Um, so anytime I start to feel stressed or worried about anything that's happening in the world, I just get outside, get my feet in the dirt and, or the grass or whatever I can find. And, uh, it centers me. Yeah. So speaking of your childhood, what is one of your most favorite childhood memories? Yeah. <laughs> Well, we we used to every year. My grandparents would would save up and take us all to Disneyland, um, and so that was always a big part of it. This was back when going to Disneyland was much cheaper, mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, so they could afford to bring all the grandchildren. And so I have a lot of uh, pictures from every year the family trip that we would take, 
And um, and then from a different aspect of things, um, the best, you know, um, I think overall experience I had that I, I, I miss, if I miss one thing from California, it's the mountains because of snow skiing. Um, I was um, always enjoyed going up to the mountains with my dad. That was kind of our, our special thing. Mm -hmm. And um, it was just a really, it was a great way to grow up being outdoorsy, but I'm actually finding that I'm outdoors more here in Dallas uh, than I was when I was living in Los Angeles or Orange County. So, so you play in the dirt and you ride on dirt bikes here in Dallas? I'm a, I, I, well, I actually, yeah, I, I go out to the lake and I, I've caught an alligator gar, which I didn't even know what that was. Mm -hmm. I was scared and excited all at the same time. It was like, I mean, I can't even get, I mean, it was bigger than this. And don't they, have, um, they have teeth. They have right? teeth. Yeah. And then I caught a baby one and that was with jug line fishing, which I didn't even know what jug line fishing is, but I was like, oh my God, I'm so Texas. <laughs> and I started saying y'all all the time. Uh, which I find is like the best word because in California, we would always say you guys or y'all. Mm -hmm. It's just it's all encompassing. It's all encompassing. I love it. It's just y'all. So I, I use it often now. So jug line fishing, that's something I haven't even uh -huh. done. So you take a pool noodle and you wrap it in tape and then there's a string attached and at the bottom of the string, there's um, a bucket that you put like concrete in and along the line, you have hooks coming out and then you take goldfish. And you put the live goldfish on the hooks. I'm so girly. I mean, <laughs> look at that. Could you see it on my face? My face is going, oh, <laughs> you do not look like someone who would be oh, doing Oh, yeah. Give me a jug line and a beer and I'm good. <laughs> so, yeah, you drop the line and then you go back to the beach. You drink a few cocktails. And then when you see your line moving and you put like color tape on it, I guess, so it doesn't get confused for somebody else's jug line. Okay. And uh, we went back and I mean, we had bass. I mean, this was in Lake Louisville right here. And it was like, <laughs> this alligator car was huge. It, it was probably four feet long. It was nuts. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Your fascinating level just went a little bit up for me. Uh, so I don't walk around sharing this information <laughs> often. Y'all should feel very lucky right now. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Well, as we're uh, talking about uh, snow skiing, what's your favorite mountain? Oh, goodness. Well, I grew up next to Big Bear, so I have to say Big Bear, California. Um, it's actually where a lot of, uh, actually, um, Sean White, uh, the mm -hmm. the snowbird, everybody knows him. He's the, you know, curly redhead. Um, that's where he actually um, used to go, and, you know, that's where he got his start. And so um, I, I may have, Mom, don't listen, may have uh, skipped school a few times to go up to the mountain if there was some fresh powder that I had mm -hmm. to get. Yeah. Um, barely ever. I was a 4.0 student, so yeah, it barely ever happened. <laughs> One of my teachers put, you know, A plus, and then in the comments it said excessive absences. Oh. I have no idea what they were talking about. about. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I was just hitting those slopes. So Disneyland. Yes. Yeah. Let's talk about Disneyland let's for a little talk. bit, because you didn't just visit Disneyland as a child. Mm. Like, what happened at Disneyland as you got mm. older? Well, I went to Cal State Fullerton, which they call Cal State Disney, because most of the people that go there work at Disneyland. Um, so while I was there, I was like, oh, I'll get a job at Disneyland. This will be great. Mm -hmm. And so I started in attractions. I actually worked um, the ride Autopia, polyester outfit, 100 degree weather. Mm -hmm. It was magical. Um, and while I was working the Autopia ride, I saw that there was auditions for uh, the Christmas parade. And I've never danced in my life, but I said, boy, I can fake it. And so I put on my non-existent dancing shoes and auditioned and got cast um, as El uh, Esmeralda from the Hunchback of Notre Dame um, in the Christmas parade hmm. and loved it. Felt very confident as a gypsy, um, danced my little heart out. Mm -hmm. And from there I said, well, I wanna be one of those characters that signs autographs and takes pictures. And so I put myself together. I had my photos of me as Esmeralda and there's thousands of girls, thousands, and they're all beautiful and they're all lined up and I got cut the first round. Oh, yeah. <laughs> got cut. Uh-huh. Right so away. What they you... went and just looked at me and went, nope. What did that, how did that make you feel at the moment? Uh, I was pretty uh, determined that they were wrong. <laughs> <laughs> 
And so I marched up into the corporate building, slapped my photos down of me as Esmeralda, and I said, you made a mistake. So you didn't go with your tail between your legs. Mm -mm. You went up mm -hmm. to the corporate offices. Okay. I went to the boss's mm -hmm. boss's boss and said, you made a mistake. And, and <laughs> what, is, what was their response? She looked at me and she goes, I think you're right. And so I got to bypass the entire, I think it was four or five day audition. And I went straight into being cast. All right. So you've got to back up for just a minute because <laughs> that just, that is very bold. Where did you learn that? I mean, that, what, what got into you to make you think, oh, well, I'm just going to go up to the corporate offices and, and tell them they made a mistake. You know, um, my parents always raised me. Well, my dad always said, fake it till you make it. And, um, and confidence was the most important thing. Um, I, I never questioned my abilities. I may have questioned, you know, as a teenage girl, questioned my appearance. I was never, people knew me in high school, but I was never the popular girl. I wasn't the cheerleader. Um, I was smart. You know, I always knew that I had um, a, a really good head on my shoulders, um, but I knew that the most important quality that I had as a woman, especially, was my confidence. And and so I I didn't even question it when they when they cut me. There were no tears. There was no there was no questioning whether I was meant to be a character at Disneyland or not. It was they made a mistake. And I know I'm trying to get into your head several years ago, but I'm just. For those that are listening and watching, like, did you like play this over in your mind? If they cut me, this is what I'm going to do. Or was it a, a, mm -hmm. a okay, it was so never an it option. Was just a and I think that, um, I had some confidence going into it because my, my manager, um, in the parade department, uh, his name is Pat and very, very sweet older gentleman. And, and he just made me feel so confident going into it. He's like, you would be phenomenal in the park. I was a theater major in college. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I had the, the acting abilities, you know, in place and I had been, um, on different television shows and stuff. I, again, yes, I have a very colorful life. And so I, I knew that I had the abilities that they needed. I knew that I had a Disney face. Um, but they just didn't take the time to look at me. And I just thought it, it was just the mistake of the person that was auditioning everyone that, they had thousands of people to look at and yeah. they just didn't, maybe they blinked when they walked by me. I don't know. What is a Disney face? It's a very <laughs> Disney. It's very round. I don't know. But what's funny, this is really funny, is that mm -hmm. most people are like, oh, you played Belle. And I'm like, no. Mm -hmm. They cast me as all like the ethnic characters, okay. which now is it's so is not the case they have completely changed their casting which is which they should and um but back then they cast me as jasmine as Merelda, kita from atlantis mm -hmm. um so it was like go get a spray tan you know and i was always very disappointed because i wanted to play snow white and i wanted to play Belle, but i got to play these very honestly, the better characters, because um, these are strong, strong mm -hmm. women. Meg from Hercules, mm -hmm. you know, and and my favorite um, character to play was uh, the Evil Queen from Snow White. Yeah, I think that's my favorite, too, of yeah. the photos that you sent in. I, I, I really like that one. I may yeah. have um, been punched in the face by a woman who was upset when I told her I was going to put her child in the moat because he was acting inappropriately. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. The child in the moat. I didn't actually throw him in the moat, though. So there was that. Right, right. Yes. No, it's just actions versus you know, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. It was all very much in character. Sure. Mm -hmm. So you you mentioned briefly about being television shows too. So were you in television before? Uh, before, during, and work? after. Okay. Yeah, I started acting um, professionally when I was um, in high school. I was sixteen um, when I first started auditioning for uh, the Pink Power Ranger. Uh, <laughs> and um, I was, um, I started out in background. Um, I, I would, I was background in um, a few major movies and had a great experience with that. Um, and then I had a very, I had another Disney moment uh, where 
I was working on the show 24 as mm -hmm. a background actor. And um, that used to be one of my favorite shows. By oh, the way. You'll love my stories then. <laughs> uh, I, I became pretty close with Kiefer. Um, I was on the set almost every day. And um, I finally um, just went up to one of the producers and I said, look, if you need a dead body or anything at all, just let me know. And next thing I know, I'm playing Tony Almeida's assistant in it. And they also cast me. I, I was a dead body for a little bit in the bed of a truck. And it was in Canyon country, like 20 degree weather, no lining on the bed of the truck, mm -hmm. like bros. But I worked on that show for three months. Wow. Yeah. And I worked on um, some sitcoms. Um, I played... Um, on the, the spinoff of the show Friends, I played Joey's, um, we'll call it Girlfriend. Mm -hmm. Wink, wink. <laughs> um, and then um, I was on uh, The New Adventures of Old Christine. Um, I played her uh, brother's, uh, Julia Louis-Dreyfus's brother's girlfriend. And I was also in a show called Listen Up with Jason Alexander. I played a dancer. Mm -hmm. They're all sitcoms, guys. You this is one of those all very too, correct. Yeah. yeah, I think you I were, sent in a photo of me and Jason. And Jason. Yeah. Great story. He actually taught me how to play Texas Hold'em. Oh, tell us that story. He's um he's on a professional world tour, uh, or he was. I don't know mm -hmm. if he still is, but the set was a Vegas set. I was a dancer, mm -hmm. and um, <laughs> uh, Penn and Teller were on the episode as well, and Malcolm Jamal Warner was also in the show. Uh, great time because my parents got to come to set and I'm introducing my dad. My dad's just like loving this. And um, in between takes, we had the whole setup for Vegas. And so we had poker tables. And so um, I knew he played poker. So I said, will you teach me? And so, yeah, he taught me how to play Texas Hold'em. I'm actually a very good player. Wow. Jason Alexander taught you how to play Texas Hold'em. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That's pretty cool. So what would you have done? What have you done in the past that you would never do again? Mm. Professional wise. Professional wise, hmm, doubted myself. Um, there were times that um, I let management believe that I wasn't capable of doing something or that I wasn't qualified for a role. Um, even the role I'm in now, um, one of the first things that um, a higher up um, said was, I think you're going to fail. Hmm. And I <laughs> internally just had this, well, hold my beer moment because it was, no, I'm not. Because I've never failed at anything I've truly put my, put my mind to. And um, I just know that I need to surround myself with the right people, that I need to keep my, my mind set in a positive manner, and that the rest of it's just figure outable. You're outable. Yeah. Good, good word. Becky gave me that word. <laughs> good words. Yeah, she'll love that. <laughs> so, you said in the role that you're currently, are you playing a role? Are you acting still? Like, no. what are you doing? Um, I'm the CEO and uh, team leader of KW Central 75. So, Keller Williams, your office, actually. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. Yeah, and we are so blessed to have her there as our leader. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> I do use my acting skills at the sales meeting monthly when I entertain you all and make a fool out of myself. Yeah, but it's it's fun. It's it is quite entertaining. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's all for your enjoyment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Is there anyone in your life that was influential in who you are today? Oh gosh, yeah. With, hands down, my father. Your father. So hands let's down. talk about dad for a minute. Sure. So, what were some things that he instilled in you, uh, taught you, uh, inspired you to do? <laughs> um, he was a leader. Um, he was uh, president of Stewart Title of California. Um, I grew up, I'm a, I'm a product of title insurance, I like to say. My parents met at First American Title, so I wouldn't exist if it wasn't title insurance. Um, but he worked his way up from the, from the mail room, literally. And, um, he had had a full ride scholarship to USC. Um, he was going to be a pilot actually. Um, he got a ROTC, um, full ride scholarship and mm -hmm. walked away from it and knew that his, his career was meant to go in a different path. And which is good because for his 50th birthday, we gave him a flight like in a fighter plane and he, he did not handle it. Well, so he was not meant to be a pilot. So things happen for a reason. But uh, he 
he was very determined. He was a workaholic. So that's definitely a quality that I pushed myself hard to, to let go of work. Mm. Five o'clock, I focus on my kids. I focus on my husband. You have to turn it off. Um, because when you don't, it, it can, he, he died at the age of 62. And I, I think largely due to the fact that he did work himself too hard. And, um, but as a leader, he was funny. Mm. He was charismatic. He, you wanted, you wanted to succeed when you were working with him, not because he had his, his thumb over you or anything like that. But, but he, he really inspired you to have fun in what you choose to do every day and to apply yourself um, to the best of your abilities, but most importantly, to, to own it when you mess up mm-hmm. and to not be afraid to ask questions and realizing that, that you, if you're smart, will surround yourself with a room full of people that are far, far smarter than you are. Yeah, we kind of talked about that this morning, didn't mm-hmm. we, as far yeah. as uh, teamwork and having the right people in the right seat on the bus at the right time. Yeah. And identifying, yeah, maybe Mm -hmm. they're not, maybe you're working with a team and, and you really, you love someone's work ethic. You love what they stand for. Um, maybe the performance isn't, isn't there, but maybe they're not in the right place. And so it doesn't mean that they have to necessarily leave the team. It just means that, that maybe you're not challenging them in the way that they're best suited. And so we're constantly trying to find people's strengths. We do this every day with agents. You know, um, sometimes agents uh, are at a brokerage and they think, well, I'm not succeeding. Therefore, it's it's the brokerage's fault. Not necessarily. Maybe you're just not being challenged in the right way. Maybe you're not being inspired Mm -hmm. in the right way. And maybe just with a small adjustment, um, you can be capable of something so much more than you even dreamed of. Yeah. No, I love what you just said as far as they aren't being inspired the right way because motivation comes from within. Yes. Right. Inspiration comes from the outside. So uh, if someone has the motivation, mm-hmm. maybe they just need to be inspired in order to get to where their abilities will take them. Well, yeah, because misery loves company. Mm-hmm. And so if you're in an environment where people are complaining or people are saying, oh, you know, this market, this market's so terrible, you're going to start to go, oh, this market's so terrible. But if you're surrounding yourself with people that see possibility you will begin to see that possibility as well. And you have to be very intentional with that. You, you know, the negativity, we, we are surrounded by negativity every day. Mm-hmm. I used to watch the news every morning, <laughs> turn on the news, do my makeup. And, you know, uh, because I love the news. But the stories every single day were, would, would my, I could literally feel my blood pressure rising. Mm-hmm. And that's how I was starting my day. And I had this conversation with my husband the other day because he was starting to have anxiety. And I said, well, look at how you're starting your day. Because he was starting his day, he would get up out of bed and he would sit down at the computer and he would jump right into his work. I said, change how you start your day. And so he now gets up and he goes straight to the gym. And when my kid isn't on summer vacation, I'm able to do the same thing. And normally we get up every morning at 445 and we go to the gym together. And that's how we start our day. But boy, when I wasn't going to the gym and I was watching the news or I was scrolling through Facebook, if you do that, give it a week and stop and see what happens. Mm -hmm. It will change everything. It'll make you a better parent. It'll make you a better um, leader, employee, spouse. I forget who it was, but I was at... um some Keller Williams event years ago and the guest speaker was talking about, tell me something good instead of Mm. like walking up to somebody and say, Hey, how are you? Because the pat answer is I'm doing great. I'm doing great. You know, whatever. But you, 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 Mm -hmm. if you were to go up to someone and say, Hey Sarah, tell me something good today. Yeah. And in his talk, he also said to uh, turn off the TV Yes. and, and don't watch the news because Put the phone away. Put the phone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Back then. I mean, I'm talking yeah. years ago. Yeah, yeah. But as far as, you know, what I was doing at the time is I was getting up and as I was getting the kids ready for school, I would turn on Good Morning America and I'd be watching the news and hearing all the awful stories. And yeah. it was just like, ugh. so after I heard him speak, I was like, you know, I'm going to do that. And it did. It, mm-hmm. it changed 
how I began my day and yeah. thus the rest of my day. Right. So. Well, and and um, and sometimes we struggle. You know, sometimes um, the alarm goes off and we're like, oh. and um, Bill, our operating partner at KW Central, he he told me a line one time. He said, Sarah, it's just feet to the floor. And so there are days where I have to really <laughs> yell at myself and say feet to the floor to get up at 445. But when you're talking about the, the tell me something good, it's funny you say that because I say that to my husband sometimes when I'm struggling, when I'm hitting a wall. And, you know, of course, this answer is usually, I love you. You're mm. so wonderful. And mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, thanks. Buy me something. I'm, you know, love languages. <laughs> Tell me I'm beautiful and buy right, me something. Right. <laughs> but we do this with our kids, too. We sit at the dining room table and I'm, I'm very um, routine driven. And so usually around six o'clock, we sit at the table and I tell the kids, you know, okay, tell me something good that happened today. Not tell me about your day. Because, mm -hmm. again, the mind, you know, we, it's a knee jerk. We go negative. And if you ever picture that that bowl of fruit and there's that one fruit that has mold on it and, it, and you can see it growing to all the fruit that's touching it. And and it's true. It's true with humans as well. Yeah. As we move on to your life in California, to your life here in Texas, mm. what made you come to Texas? Midlife crisis. Mid oh, no, I'm just joking. <laughs> it kind of was actually. Uh, you know, my father. My father passed uh, suddenly and um, tragically. Uh, we were not prepared. Um, it, we didn't see the writing on the wall. And when I say that my family was original homesteaders where we lived, I mean, I worked for Stuart Title. I mean, it, he was my superior, and mm -hmm. and I couldn't imagine um, staying there. I just couldn't see it. He was gone. That chapter was closed. And and my husband, luckily, was feeling the same way. Um, my mom also was feeling the same way. It was, now is the time for a new beginning. Mm. And so we sold everything, literally everything, and um, put our home, you know, on the market. Of course, you know, the market was hot then, too. And, um, you know, it got swooped up quick. And we came out here and we did a big loop of the whole DFW Metroplex. Um, because I have aunts and cousins that are, you know, ones in Salina, ones in Las Colinas, ones in Keller. And so we did the big loop and it's like, ooh, who do we want to live closest to? You know, um, who's going to babysit the kids mm -hmm. the most? No, I'm just joking. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> and when we were driving, we got to um, Highland Village and we went, ooh, hills. Mm -hmm. It's like Texas size hills, mm -hmm. but it's like, ooh, whoops, you know, and there was a lake and it just felt like home. And so we luckily, we found a home right away and we love it and we love our neighbors and it's just, the kids are happy. The schools are great. Um, there's a, there's a cardinal that literally visits me every night at six o'clock at dinner time, which is funny because six o'clock is the same time that I would have dinner with my family. Um, and it gets very loud and it chirps and it stares and they say cardinals are, you know, your deceased family visiting. So mm -hmm. um, that cardinal's very persistent at six o'clock. Yeah. yeah. Let's talk about change. Yeah. That that's a huge change. If family were original homesteaders, or that's you mm -hmm. know, it's, it's I was on five yeah. acres. I had a pig and goats. There you go. So moving to Texas and living in Highland Village is a yeah. little different. Yeah. And that's a big change coming from California to Texas. Yeah. Well, don't want to get into politics or anything like that, but. What was there any fear in no. maybe in the back of your mind of of that change? No, no, no. It looking back, I, I've thought about this. Right, I'm like, did I have like, a, oh God, what are we doing? No. I there's something about me that if I do something, I'm all in. I don't question it. I'm all in. I'm a very very committed person. Um, and I give 100% of myself no matter what it is. Um, but with it, um, with this move, we, we had looked at some other states and some other areas. We had looked at Prescott, Arizona. We had some friends there. And and it just didn't, it, although the topography was beautiful and I was like, oh, this is amazing. This is gorgeous. It just, it didn't feel right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's, I think everything happens for a reason. There's a reason why I met you. There's a reason why I ran into Bill that day just out of the blue. I wasn't I wasn't working for Keller Williams. 
I was I'm not even a licensed realtor. <laughs> you know, I I was just in the right place at the right time, and I didn't I didn't hesitate mm. because most people would have experienced um you know an owner of a Keller Williams office coming up to them and saying, hey, I've got this opportunity. Um, I want to interview interview you to be the CEO of an office. They would question, oh, you know, I'm not licensed. Am I, you know, qualified to do this? I never did. I just thought, okay, I trust Bill. If Bill sees something in me, mm-hmm. I'm going to trust it. I'm going to go along with the ride. Two and a half years later, he hasn't fired me. <laughs> and he better not. If you're listening, Bill, <laughs> right? You better not. There you go. <laughs> Give you a little plug there. <laughs> Well, that's great. I mean, because, you know, fear can paralyze people um, mm-hmm. and change is a is one of the largest contributors to fear. Yeah. And so uh, that's why I asked that question. Well, I, I, yeah, I mean, look at what we went through. I mean, literally, I moved here in November of 2019 and we had about four months of normalcy before COVID happened. Mm. And everything changed. I mean, we we were barely getting to know people. I started as the team leader at KW Central on uh, January 15th of 2020. Mm-hmm. I had like a solid four weeks. I got to go to one family reunion, <laughs> you know, and um, and then it all just stopped. And I remember we, we closed the office for three weeks because nobody knew what to expect and we we're trying to keep everyone safe. I'll never forget leaving the office that day and um, thinking I have a mom who you know, is high risk. And I just lost my father and he was on a ventilator for three weeks. He had pneumonia. So I lost him in the way that everybody was losing people with COVID. And so I still had PTSD from that. And I watched it all very, you know, intently. And, and we had three weeks and I'm seeing all of my wonderful agents still doing open houses, still doing everything that they had to do. And so I looked at the team and I said, we're going back into the office. And we're going to make it work. We've we got to wear masks. We got to, you know, sanitize. We're, we're just, we're not going to come from a place of fear. We're not going to allow ourselves to stop. We're going to be smart. We're going to be responsible. We're going to make sure that we do everything to protect ourselves and those around us. But we're going to move forward. And that's what we did. Yeah. And your office is recognized by Gary Keller himself. And yeah. uh, lots of great things are happening in that office. Yeah. 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 I've, I've had the pleasure of uh, getting to meet Gary and um, Mark King and some of, you know, the other wonderful individuals that um, are with Keller Williams. And I'm blessed to, you know, it is a gift for me to get to go into the office every day. The culture that we have in our market center um, cannot be duplicated. It's there's nothing fake about it. You can walk down a hallway, ask a question, and we joke about it all the time. You're going to have a whole pack of people run over and help you out. And I've just never seen anything like it before in my life. And I'm blessed to be able to put my feet on the floor every day and walk in. And, and I'm blessed that, you know, my, my children get to see me in a leadership position, the empowerment of, you know, that Keller Williams gives for women. Um, I just am so thankful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, we're thankful for you. Oh, thanks. Yes, ma'am. Um. As far as looking back on your life and where you are today, what is a piece of wisdom that you would tell your younger self? Mm-hmm. The, it, it, confidence is everything. It seems like you had confidence as a younger I, person. But I went through struggles. I went through terrible, terrible things. Terrible, horrible, horrible things. And that uh, most people in my position would not have had confidence. Uh, and most people, it, it it would have maybe completely stopped some. So what gave you that strength to continue on? There was no other option. Um, in my mind, um, I believe that the mind is a very powerful thing. And I think you have two options every single day. You can spiral, which we all can naturally spiral. Trust me, I spiral many, many times a day. And I I have to stop myself. And I have to be very intentional about redirecting it. And it is a choice. It it without a doubt is not something that comes naturally. And I think if that's where, where people struggle is that if they're looking for that ability to happen naturally, you will be looking forever. 
you have to identify the fact that you your mind does spiral to a negative spot sometimes you do feel depression allow it recognize it find out what the triggers are the news in the morning mm-hmm. the social media and be intentional and and this is something i have not mastered by any means i i go to therapy <laughs> my therapist knows this about me you know and and um I'm constantly trying to better myself, but I, I found that surrounding myself with positive, um, just big thinkers. We have this all the time where we have masterminds in our office and we're just constantly bouncing ideas off of one another. But think about it, most people don't have that. Most people just get stuck in the ick. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. it's, it's so ick. Yeah. And, and that's why I, I tell my husband sometimes, I said, I have to take this thinking that I get at the office and I have to bring it home and and have these conversations with my children because they're both, they're very smart. And I, and I try to have these conversations with my husband because I feel like I'm the best version of myself when I'm at the office, not because it's the office, but because of the minds and the positivity and the energy. And so once you identify that and you go, okay, there's something to that, then you can apply it in other areas of your life. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm a father of children. You're, you're a mother. Mm-hmm. And, uh, which explains our wine I, passion. I, I, I think it does, <laughs> yes. And There's water in water, this. Yeah. It's just water. <laughs> <laughs> With that being said, our actions and what we do day to day impact our kids, mm-hmm. right? <laughs> so, it, what is it that you try to teach yours? I'm a very silly mom. Um, I embarrass my kids regularly. Um, I, I come off as very, you know, businesslike and, you know, inspirational, but really I'm a hot, hot mess as a mom and I own it. I own it. Um, I have fun. I, I, I make, um, I make my, I want my children to feel very comfortable coming to me to talk to me about anything, anything at all. Um, and they know that no matter what they're loved, no matter what. But I had this moment with my nine-year-old the other day who she's nine going on 30. Um, and she, a friend was having a, a swim party and she wasn't invited. Hmm. And I was mad. And I was like, I know that mom. I'm going to call that mom. And I was hurt. And I said, Abby, do you want me to to call the mom and, and see if it was a mistake that you weren't invited? And she's like, no, mom, I'm fine. And I was like, no, Abby, really tell me. If you're hurt, I, I, I'll, I'll stick up for you. And she says, mom... You tell me all the time that it's 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 impolite for me to invite myself over to other people's houses because hmm. she does that a lot. She's like, you know, hey, hey, hey I'm gonna come over, and I'm like, kid, <laughs> stop, like that's rude. And 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 then she said, and plus, I have friends that come over all the time, and I don't always invite her. And so it's okay. She's allowed to have more friends than just me, and she's allowed to spend time with those friends, and I don't have to be hurt by it. There wasn't like a lesson that I sat down with my child and said, okay, you're going to learn this lesson today. And that's why I think that there are mistakes that are made is that too many parents try to like, you're going to do this and you're going to be good and you're going to get straight A's. I don't believe in that. I believe in inspiring my kids through through them watching how I behave, um, the actions that I take, the me being intentional about being on time to work and, and you know, the love that I pour into to friends and family members because that's the best lesson that they can learn. Um, and they'll apply that in many, many areas. Um, you know, my, my parents were, we always welcomed others into our home. We were always taking care of um, people that weren't as fortunate. And, um, and I carried that over. And, you know, and, and, and I, I now see my children doing the same thing as well. Mm-hmm. And so kids pay attention. Yeah. Would you encourage your children if they wanted to get into acting to do so? <laughs> so I have, I have one, yeah, I have two that are, um, I've got one that's into sports, but also acting. And yes, I would actually not for, not so that they can be famous. The lessons that I learned through being a theater major and, and the acting classes I took in Los Angeles, it taught me a firm handshake, eye contact. And most in public speaking, 
I'd be without going to school. I wouldn't be comfortable sitting here today. I wouldn't be comfortable leading a sales meeting. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be comfortable meeting with somebody one-on-one. When you perform in front of thousands and millions, you know, are watching on TV, one-on-one, it's easy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, as we uh, wrap up, I wanted to ask you about some dreams of yours. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So as is the fashion of the show, I, I asked my guest about the dreams that you have. Mm-hmm. We have a nonprofit that I'm the chief happiness I officer know. of called Who Do You Know? And um, we make dreams come true for people um, from any walk of life by making connections and we inspire imagination through that process, mm-hmm. which is something that we feel when I say we, it's me and the board, yeah. we feel is missing in people's lives. People have forgotten how to dream and how to imagine and, and believe that things can come true. Yeah. So we focus on three different pillars. A person you want to meet, a place you want to go, mm-hmm. and an experience you want to have. So I'm going to ask you, Sarah, mm. um, because we have a lot of viewers and, and listeners, and yeah. um, they may be able to help a dream of yours come true. And I want <laughs> you to not be modest here. I want you to just mm. really open your mind. And if you haven't thought about it, give it a couple of seconds. But we'll start with the person you want to meet. Who is a person Easy. that's living that mm-hmm. you would want to meet? It's already a person I've met, but I want like an intimate one-on-one. A, a good solid 30 minutes to an hour of deep conversation with Gary Keller. Okay. Yeah. I can only imagine why. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, I've, I've had the just brief interactions and stuff, but I, I want to really pick into his brain. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So a place you want to go. That one's a little bit harder. Um, I would say Venice, um, not California. <laughs> I didn't even think about Venice, Italy. <laughs> um, it's a place that my father always wanted to go. Um, it's it's Italy, you know. Uh, really, anywhere in Italy, and I'd I, I'd be I'd be thrilled. But yeah, mm-hmm. Venice. So Venice. Mm-hmm. Okay. Have you traveled overseas? Before? Yeah, I've been to uh, France, and um, I also uh, went to um, England as well when I was 18. I traveled mm-hmm. with my grandparents. Oh, yeah. that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. And an experience you want to have? Oh, that one's really hard because I find joy in seeing others' joy mm. in experiences. Um and don't you think others like to see your joy when you experience it? It's hard for me to like wrap my brain around that, but I'm trying to. I'm trying to. Um, oh, I would love more than anything. Here we go. Uh, to stay in one of those cool huts, like in Fiji, like over the water. I know it's kind of a destination too, but it's an experience because you're in that cool hut over the water. Okay. So, yeah. 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 Okay. All right. <laughs> so um, that's fantastic. It just sounds so peaceful. It is. Yeah. To just, it does. yeah. I mean, it's just nature and just all the good stuff. Yeah. And that's one reason we created the nonprofit is, is yeah. to allow others to have that experience of making dreams come true for other people, to see that joy. And it's so hard people. because, boy, we struggle with that so much. To think about, like, Ourselves, it feels selfish, you know, to, mm-hmm. and so I loved it when you and I first talked about it because I was like, wow, that's, that's not a person's natural state to do that. So you have to really push yourself. Yeah. Josh, take her to Fiji. <laughs> He's like done. <laughs> <laughs> Josh is her husband, by the yes, way. Yes. Yes. <laughs> All right. So as we wrap up here, talk about the office and what is so special about our office? Oh my Why gosh. would agents want to be there and they never want to leave? We're like, a family. What, yeah. So tell us. And and one other thing, yeah. as you you talk about the office, is you know not only what do you find special about the office and and all that, but what do you get out of being the leader of that office? Oh yeah, that's a book. That's a book. Uh, so blessed. Um, the office is is amazing. Um. <laughs> 
We have 425 ish um, agents, and the leadership staff there knows everyone by name. And not only that, but we know what their favorite things are. Mm. We're very intentional about who we're in business with. And so we know, you know, what their favorite candies are and, you know, and, and we've got all kinds of plans surrounding what we're going to do with that knowledge. But, um, it's uh, having, I've, I've been into 300 plus different real estate offices, you know, with my prior career and everything, my job was to go around to different, um, mm -hmm. brokerages. And most of the time it felt a bit high school, like, you know, people competing with one another, tearing each other down. And, and it was a very negative environment that nobody really felt like they wanted to sit and actually work. Our office, the energy, you feel it the minute you walk through the front door, it feels like you're home. And I don't know how else to put it into words other than it just feels like that warm. I mean, we do have, we need to upgrade. We need to do some sprucing up. Um, but in some ways I don't want to because it has that home feeling to it. Mm -hmm. That's so special. That's so hard to recreate. But, but the agents, they, they, we have a, a baseball team called the homies. How cute is that? Mm -hmm. I mean, and, and I'm going to play on the homies. I, I told Hunter, one of our uh, productivity coaches to sign me up. I'm going to, I'm going to be a homie. It's so cute. Mm -hmm. And, and we, we had an agent um, who got COVID um, when he was in Mexico during the height of all the numbers and $10,000 a day to keep him in the hospital. He was on a ventilator. He wasn't going to survive. He was not going to make it. And you and I, we started calling state legislators. I, I we were trying anything to, because there was no hospital beds mm -hmm. and he was going to die. And his wife had COVID and she couldn't be in the hospital with him. And it was a mess. And with your help and we got, a, a, I don't even know how it happened, but um, a hospital bed opened up and without hesitation, our OP um, wrote a check, uh, not only to cover the hospital bills for the daily like requirements that were needed there, but we paid for a medevac to bring this man back to Texas to get him into a hospital. And you know this because mm -hmm. you spent time with him this morning. He made a full recovery. Right. And that was done by our agents, fundraising efforts, and that that's who we are because there was no way we were going to let a family member of ours not make it. That's right. It just wasn't an option. Right. So what does that bring you? <laughs> Fulfillment. Mm -hmm. When I, when I look at, you know, I'm, I'm 41 years old and when I look at my life and it, all of its craziness, I'm very fulfilled. Mm -hmm. It's good work. Yeah. Good work. And being a person in your life fulfills me. So I ah. just want you to know, I find you very special and um, I'm so glad that we have met and that you're, you're one of my favorite people. Um, <laughs> and I hope you found today um, how fascinating and inspiring Sarah Waters is. Um, you'll see how to contact her if you uh, have any interest in getting your license as a realtor or if you are a realtor and want to join a fantastic uh, family, uh, you can reach out to her as well. So Sarah, thank you for being here thank today you. and uh, love you. Love you. Thank you. All right. See y'all next week. Bye y'all. The Matt Hilton Show would like to thank our sponsors, Hilton Realty Advisors and Maria Leach with the First United Mortgage Group. The Matt Hilton Show would also like to thank our partners, the Who Do You Know organization. You can find out more at WDYK.org. If you'd like to contact Matt or know a fascinating person with an inspiring story that would make a great guest, reach out to the show at TheMattHiltonShow at gmail.com.